Welcome to our Late HP show with your very own 5D Mystic for our 8-8 portal, Lionsgate. We have had, as always, every portal brings to us a lot of important and expanding information for the Divine Feminine. The Divine Masculine, it depends, because, you know, masculines, and they don't have to be actively people who don't have clairs, meaning that some people, no, uh, the ones who are spiritual bypassers. So let me explain. 5D Collective, this lovely Christ Consciousness. It's called Christ Consciousness because, you know, Jesus. What I got to see as I moved through my own ascension was not only people make a shit show out of the Twin Flame connection, and I didn't really bother with it because I knew what we were going through since I'm a divine feminine. So I have the relationship with what is pure consciousness, which is a field of intelligence, FYI. So I don't have to use the word God. In fact, I try not to, but I did get raised with God and Jesus. And I didn't turn my back. In fact, I told God, I said, I'm pretty sure they are all turning their back on you because I don't remember in my catechism getting taught that I need to insult human beings and cast stones. I actively have Jesus who showed me how not to. I actively got taught in my religion of the world classes, no, one class, in my bachelor's years. Yes, world religions. In fact, if you tune into the audio 88 portal, you'll hear more about that one. So I won't go into too much detail. I'm just going to say that I got taught something that I had learned in catechism, which is if you truly repent for your sins and then you believe in Jesus Christ, that's it for Christianity. All people want to argue with me when I say I appreciate my catechism because I didn't turn back on what I got taught. I would never, me, Maria, human being, have made a promise at all had I ever been told that I was going to have to do what I see people that want to tell me that yoga brings demons out of you. Yes, that's called ignorance, not even to mention how the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and clairs are all one and the same. So when I see ignorance, I can't help but notice I'm not a flat earther. I'm a woo-woo spiritual lady for a reason. And I didn't turn my back on faith. No, I actively know what it means to turn the other cheek. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. And I did say, hey, God, so if you ever present to me evil, I'm pretty sure I know what to do because Jesus showed me that, what to do. It's called keep your heart open, turn the other way. But obviously it didn't mean allow yourself to be beat up. No, not, not at all. That's not what it meant. So it didn't mean that I would have to remind people of sinners as if we are going to shame humanity for the rest of their life like the medieval times? I don't know. I really don't know. Somewhere, I think people lost track of what year it was. That, that's all I'm going to say. So with that, um, let me think. Yes. As I was trying to share another story, when I was explaining to people how Christianity tells us to walk with all, and then I kept on getting different messages by people who had had bad experiences with the church. I understood why, but I also understood they were all pretty much using the same stories, you know. So when I would talk to people who are of actual spiritual nature, that means mystic or not, there's a lovely man that I had the honor to have a conversation with as him and I conversed philosopher, spiritual philosopher, and he said, I appreciate Jesus. I don't believe in the religion stuff or any of that, but I know he shared messages of wisdom, and I love that he supported us to help each other, and this person would get consistently asked of people to be helping, and so him and I are talking, and, and he says, but you know, he gave us all the ways, but he didn't give us a key to open up people's hearts, and I said, yes, he did. They have to open it up. You can't make them. The whole point of free will is that you get a choice point, it's called. When you see me and you get to talk to me in my face, you get to be authentic or not. You get to be a human being or not. Now, the people who don't have the capacity to be human beings, well, they are between the 1 to 24 or 22 of Michael Stone scale and the Son of 14 Charming are my least favorite because they speak with their mouths and they pull the wool over the eyes of lost boys, lost girls, lost days especially when they're demonizing human beings and they lack education and they use words like lack of imagination for evil and you got a buttload of people that are part of the in-group listening with ears that say, yep, see, they're right. So when people are healing actively from, for example, narcissism and sociopathy, you got hate mail, you got people going that think that they represent Jesus telling people that are healing 
that they should off themselves, not to mention that they should know that that's not actually okay because it's a gift to be given life. So whenever I see inconsistency, see a divine feminine, we don't get angry because we can hear really well because it means that my inner world has no shame button. See, divine feminine, you can only be your divine feminine when you actively have no shame. It means you're an integrated brain. It's actually what the optimization of any mammalian heritage human being, unless you want to believe in aliens. Well, that's a whole other story for also journey people. And I love when I hear how they're saying technology and sciences makes us into machines and takes away our humanity. It's like, you know that life and consciousness are not even about this body, right? You do realize that the body and the self, you, you've got to love when you got neuroscientists to say the spiritual people are right. And my neuroscientist colleagues are wrong. There's no self. And they go on and they write, you know, because pop magazine stuff, I get to read all of it. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. He has a preferred truth. His is spirituality. He's a spiritual bypasser. I don't know why he's calling himself a neuroscience. But then again, we got scientists, people who think they know everything. <laughs> They don't know how Dr. Daniel Siegel gets chased. Oh, I do. They do probably. Probably they're the ones who chase him down the hallways. <laughs> so when you do hear about neuroscientists who are smart, like Patrick McNamara, and they explain to you where the self is pretty much allocated according to the brain sciences people who know what they're talking about, you're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because the right mode is the part that is online the first year of your life. So it makes complete sense at that, that and, and something about executive decision-making functions, stuff like that. But I don't remember all the specifics. Let me go back to my story. So with my friend, when I said, you're the people, yeah, you can open up your heart if you choose, so here's the deal. I was going to read to you something today, but I didn't find it. Then I went ahead and I did find it, and that's for those of you who are watching all of the episodes. What other people say about you doesn't matter, but you should not be ashamed of what you have done. So when uh, you do anything that you will be ashamed of, well... You're going to know it. Now, the unfortunate business is that a first-year-old that doesn't get securely attached, they automatically have shame because they didn't get consistently, contingently communicated. So they don't know what love is. In fact, their body consistently suffers. And some people say, I don't want to do journaling and mindfulness and meditation or any of that because the therapist said I'm doing a good job and people are fucked up, so I'm going to say avoid an attachment. It's a lame-ass excuse, lady, but obviously your therapist didn't explain to you what the outcome would be or maybe you just don't want to go down that path because there's attachment coaches who say secure attachment is boring. So I'm going to make sure to be able to explain it like a five-year-old what secure attachment is and what Jesus taught me in the first place and God and that your innocence was not taken away from you by an apple or a demon. But the reality is we have transgenerational cultural trauma and it makes a lot of sense. Do you know where shame comes from? Our ancestors, evolutionary psychologists. Now obviously you don't have to believe in the you know, mental health or hygiene science is updated ones, not the ones who just want to bring to you archetypes and basically they're also spiritual bypassers and I just call them mantles of mental health. So again, but don't take my word for it. I'm a woo-woo pseudoscience spiritual lady. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just know the earth isn't flat or round. Which one is it? Is reality real? Let me ask you, what do you think? <laughs> So on that note, uh, you must not be ashamed of what you have done. There's one thing, and I share that on the audio, and you won't ever get those details unless I'm actively, I'm not even going to bother saying it out loud because the only people who actively do any of this type of, oh, well, it's the end of the world. What do you do? Are the people who don't like that we just love people because we're toxic positive, apparently. Anyone who's happy has to be toxic positive because why would they smile all the time? Maybe because we're happy inside. Did anybody ever think of that? You know, anytime I hear that, I'm like, wow, so you're wishing I'm, I'm not happy. <laughs> Should I tell you <laughs> that I'm happy inside? Even when I'm crying, I can be happy because I did get this gift called life. Thank you, God. And I got taught as a kid about how much of a sin it would be. And then I go out to grow up and I'm like, I don't want to die because <laughs> it's dark. I don't want to be in darkness. I don't want to forget. And then I got Claire's. <laughs> I was like, yay. <laughs> no, actively, I was like, wow. <laughs> No, this is not real. And then I started reading tarot. I was like, whoa, that's really real. Oh, look, a cash of Wow, I, I know a lot. And then I got twin flames. I'm like, whoa, now this is fun. And then like, wow, and this is fucked up, but it's really amazing. And then I got more, and we're going to have a take two. So one at a time. 8-8 eight, eight portal for 5D and divine feminines. Oh, we know we're going to smile more because... Like that quote, which isn't from the Buddha. I don't remember who did it, but it's we look up and we're like, you know what, life? 
God, Akash, intelligence, I know you have something in store for me because my mind, I wake up in the morning, I give myself meaning and then I can take it away and oh, I got emotions, I'm a real person. Like Pinocchio, once he becomes real. So it's your social engagement system, FYI. It's an integrated brain. Come on over with mindset, mindfulness and mind sight, I think. Tune in.